shot a bust head. Don't care that kind. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as always, let me know when you can hear me. Make sure volume is good and all that. It's kind of fuzzy. Can I do the magic yeah. hand? There we go. Yep. Video and sound. Excellent. So uh, today is going to be a really quick one. Uh, two reasons. Uh, first, most importantly, it's been a really good week. Uh, a really, really good week here, which I will certainly talk about. And second, uh, my, co the, my co founder and partner, Andrew, is getting married this weekend. Uh, so I've got to get out of here fairly quickly after this, change, and get to the rehearsal dinner. So maybe a short QA, depends how quickly I can get through this. So. Without further ado, let's get going. First, like I said, it's been a really absolutely awesome week in the studio. Uh, engineering has been, for the first time in a while, focused more on features uh, than focused on, say, fixing memory leaks or bugs or other things. So rehabilitation is going along beautifully. Um, we tested obviously the really cool multi-text server code. We've had awesome tests this week uh, with our backers, uh, not only showing off that tech, but the first of our new animations. There is no doubt that, you know, during Dragon Con at the, and with the Dragon Con video, uh, a lot of you were concerned still about our animations. And I had said, please be patient, wait for the new animation system, wait for new animations to go in, that the animation you were seeing of the run, and especially to the guys in Dragon Con who hit me up a, a couple of times about that, have you seen the new run? See, I, I told you not to worry. Um, and, you know, Scott saw some of those posts and some of the feedback from uh, the folks uh, like myself who were down there and said, I'm going to fix that. And so, a little bit ahead of schedule, went ahead, put in a new running animation, and has been tweaking it. And based on what we've seen so far, you folks are very happy with it. So, again, a great week on that side. The art team has been doing things like they always do, really, really well. And I've been spending a lot of time in interviews. Uh, not the interviews where they say, MJ, tell us what happened with Left Axe in Dark Age of Camelot. But instead, interviews of programmers. We've been getting so many uh, from uh, the folks out in Seattle that it's been lovely. Today I had actually two hours worth of interviews, another reason why I'm running a little bit short on time. So, uh, bad news. Um, gotta, gotta be honest, uh, on the stability of the game and on the client, we didn't do anything this week. But that's good news because we didn't have to. So this is the first time I can say in many weeks that we did not have to spend a lot of engineering time on stability, which freed up, obviously, those engineers to work on other things. Uh, now, are we going to have other times when uh, we're going to have to go back and do more stability work? Absolutely. But what you folks have seen this week in multiple 
alpha, IT, and beta 1 tests is a client server setup that for an alpha game or even a beta 1 game is unusually solid. The number of crashes we have seen from the client, including crashes caused by the new tech, are so low that, you know, it's, you don't want to say they're um, not worth worrying about because we always worry about them, but well below the expectations. And of course, server crashes, there were none. Once again, we ran all day, then we ran again all day, and hopefully we're going to run this weekend and no crashes at all. So that was great. Um, other news, uh, Andrew landed, in, and let me use his exact words, probably the largest code change this project will see. Uh, this is something that uh, was a precursor and is a precursor to getting the new uh, ability system uh, working, as well as other things. Uh, he's been working on it for quite a while. It has landed. Uh, it will not be in this weekend's test, assuming we have one, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but it's huge. It impacts so many different things. Uh, anything that touches the abilities and network, this code change uh, impacts. It's really, really good stuff, including improvement in bandwidth, which will get us even more users. Improving in how we use CodeGen uh, to create code uh, for the game. Um, kind of code that writes itself. It, it's kind of cool. Skynet version 01. Um, we've uh, also finally put in uh, the ability to have players use skills that are not skills you crafted. So when, uh, I don't know, siege engines, for example, uh, are added to the game, you don't have to craft your own ability to use the siege engine. You can use whatever is built already for the siege engine. Though you could have your own siege engine skills, for example, like crafters. Uh, other things in this, uh, uh, sorry, uh, other things as a result of this. We actually have classes that are meaningful now. So the next time we turn on abilities, you'll see that, sorry, I, I, I frankly, I just ate 20 minutes ago. Uh, that's how crazy today has been. Um, you'll actually see classes and skills that fit together. So when you come in as a stone healer, healer you won't have all the skills in the game. You'll have stone healer abilities plus melee abilities. So for those of you, which is probably all, who've been waiting for beta 1, that's obviously a stepping stone to beta 1. Uh, lots of basic improvements uh, in the ability system, Ben, Rob, uh, Tim and Mark have been working on that feverishly uh, to try to get more and more abilities in, to try to get more and more functionality in, and again, hopefully this weekend, uh, IT and Alpha will be able to take a look at it. Um, we've hooked up the Stone Healer Ground Stones uh, to New Watt, so, you know, still placeholder, but it'll give you Stone Healers an idea of how things are going to work. Uh, we're hoping to have hots and dots in by the end of the day, obviously as well, another important step to beta one. Um, then a whole bunch of cleanup, including stuff with cure wounds. Uh, so rehab stuff going really, really well. Uh, good news out of uh, Seattle. Uh, programmer out there found a way to get a 10 to 20 percent increase in how we load terrain. So as you're walking around our procedurally generated on the fly world, we've gotten a nice speed increase already. More is coming. Uh, you saw our, our big, uh, our pretty big piece of tech, the multi-server tech this week. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, who didn't read any of my emails or didn't receive my emails, uh, what multi-server tech is, is pretty cool. Uh, it's the ability not only to move between servers, and that's old hat. Obviously, MMOs have been doing that forever. But what's so cool about it is when you're in the game, not only can you jump to other servers, but you can see people and interact with them on other servers. So if you have been in our test or will be on our test this weekend, you'll be able to see people on other servers, and you'll be able to, well actually you don't have wave in yet, but you'll be able to jump up and down uh, and instantly move from one island to another. Over the coming weeks, you'll also then be able to use your abilities 
on people on other servers. And again, the word server is so important in this case, and I'm using it the right way, which is servers are totally separate machines. These are not, you know, software servers that are running on one big server. These are totally different machines. They could be across the world for all we care. And you can see people on it. You can, of course, chat, which people have been doing forever, but you'll be able to interact with them in the coming weeks. And that is really cool with a big impact on our game. Obviously important not only uh, just for spreading as the population spreads out, that we can have separate servers uh, that can handle the islands, but for the islands having their own life, for the islands moving and closing in on each other, having this kind of tech, more than a little helpful. And for those who played MMOs, not a lot of MMOs uh, have been able to do this. Not the second part of being able to actually interact with people real time. And not only can that work just for this game, it could be another game entirely, as long as it's you know using our protocol. So that's pretty cool. If you uh, want to take an example from something that was in the news today or uh, this week, the whole uh, Westworld uh, type of game, where you know you could be in Roman world. And if you look over the fence and see the people, you know, in Old West World, you know, they could shoot a gun at you and you could, oh, uh, well, probably die. Uh, but, hey, that's part of the uh, game. So, that's really cool. Uh, very cool. Uh, we also um, did something to break up uh, download size. We have a sound bank editor. So, instead of, oh, gee, we changed uh, a few of the sounds and now you have to re-download a whole giant sound bank we've broken it up you know it's something that we really needed to do both from you know your folks sanity uh, and also for our bandwidth costs because having to download a full sound bank when all you've done uh, is change a few sounds is pretty silly so that's it uh, we've, we are starting to make progress on our VFX capabilities uh, believe it or not Mike you know Mr. Twinkle here uh, has been working with one texture sheet uh, for all the VFX. That's going to change, so he's going to have a lot more uh, room to play in. Uh, art continues doing great art. Uh, you've seen the new animation, the new running animation. Scott tweaked it yesterday. I don't even know if he tweaked it today because I haven't had time to talk with him. But he's continuing to tweak it. Uh, we're getting new fidgets in as well. Um, you've seen some of the changes to the autumn biome. So if you haven't and you're in the test this weekend, uh, please check it out. The Big Island, uh, it's a pretty good idea of where we could go uh, with our forests. And as always, it isn't finished yet. This is absolutely a work in progress. I would give our forests right now maybe a B, maybe even a low B. Uh, I would like to get us up to certainly a low A. I think the best forest in any MMO right now on Black Desert Online, we certainly cannot reach that level. You know, if you look at how many uh, polys, how many tries, uh, triangles they use uh, to generate a scene, we couldn't do that and have uh, a thousand people. They can't do it. No one can do it. It's all math. Um, but if we can be number two, this time being number two may not so be so bad. And that's what we're going for. We want our forest to look fantastic. You've seen the darkness, you've seen some of the colors, you've seen how we're trying to make the environment uh, more immersive, and we've barely started. Uh, working on uh, speeding up how we create weapons. Uh, the art team uh, is working on a new process to speed things up, which is uh, lovely. Uh, new swords went in, and as well, I said, uh, new stone healer stones. Work in progress. But they've gone in. Uh, Ben's been working like crazy uh, late nights uh, trying to get in more and more components so you guys can build uh, lots of abilities. And as you'll see in the next test, we're getting there. Now, important note. When we say the abilities are in there, please remember the new animations aren't. They are not. I'll repeat this in the update. I'll repeat it in any test email we want you folks to go in 
and build abilities, but don't worry about the animations. We don't want to wait till we can get the new animation system in, or the new animations themselves, for you guys to test these abilities. So the animations are non-existent. And what is in there is very, very placeholder. So please don't panic. Please don't think, oh look, they've got all the abilities working, but the animations look like ass. They will. They're supposed to right now because these are the old ones, these are the placeholder ones, and that will all change just like, you know, the running animation just changed. Uh, so, let's see, what else? Uh, some changes to the patcher, uh, all, you know, work in progress, but that's it. So, uh, look, uh, somebody get the door, please. Um... That's it for the you know top tenish list. Uh, again, folks, it has been a great, great week. Actually, the people are coming in. It's Corey's birthday, so coming in with balloons and cupcakes and all sorts of fun stuff for Corey. Um, what else? Uh, so yes, I spoke about the interviews. Uh, we'll hopefully have more news. You know, on that uh, in the coming weeks, we have seen a lot of resumes from studios uh, who either have closed down or are starting to lay off some people. So I expect we'll get even more resumes uh, coming in over the over the next few weeks. Our goal is to add a minimum of one programmer. We'd love to add, add two, and I've already got three budgeted. So you know, it's very possible that by the end of maybe October uh, we will have maybe even a doubling of size of people out in Seattle and that is really good news for you folks because the engineers we're now focusing on are gameplay and certainly another engine guy to make it even prettier and to speed it up and do all the things that we need to do to make this not only a good game for beta but a great game for launch. So we're doing everything we can, whether it's here or out in Seattle, to make that happen. So it's about 4.20. Uh, I'll try to take 10 minutes of questions, and then I have to go uh, to get a couple other things done before I have to head to the rehearsal dinner. So folks, you know, try to keep the questions yes, no, if possible. I'll try to keep my answers short. And please try to focus on, uh, you know, things that you know I won't answer. All right, we'll skip the uh, fun Q&A intro video so we can get right to the questions. Um, Ulvik asks, with the server tech you described, could we see some international mixed game world servers with 50% of islands running on a server in Europe, etc., when they'd be prefer to hang out on due to the lower lag, balancing Euro and stateside play? Sure. I mean, a server is a server is a server. I mean, that's the idea. It doesn't matter where they are, and that's the cool bit. Um, uh, Cleanse Cersei asks, if there's enough Q&A time, could you explain what happens when a spell goes from one server to the other, and which server would take care of the air system? Um, again, it's, it's meant to be invisible. So, if the air interaction would be on the recipient server, the victim server, the target server, then that's where it would, uh, it would um, interact. If on the other hand it's on the uh, casters uh, server, then that's where it would interact. The idea is to make it totally invisible, so you won't even know necessarily that you're going between servers. That's the cool bit. And again, hopefully we'll have that in a couple weeks. Uh, Horst Rudolph asks, will there be ships which need multiple people to control them? Um, no discussions on that. Uh, we serious ones as of yet. Uh, we certainly will have ships. Uh, whether they will be actually controllable, uh, I doubt it for a launch, but afterwards, who knows? Uh, Clens Cersei asks, can we have Mr. Twinkle show his work on stream? Absolutely. Uh, D. 
Dion the Grey asks, were you actually invited to the wedding, or are you just going anyway? Uh, no, I am uh, <laughs> I am one of his groomsmen. Uh, so yes, I, I, I was invited. Um, Mia Tallis asks, does the Beta 1 require a substantial amount of work that wouldn't be ne needed for release otherwise? No. No, but uh, there's nothing... Hmm, nothing I can think of uh, that we would be putting into beta one that wouldn't we wouldn't have been doing for release um, you know especially once we uh, have all the classes working as classes which is you know one of the uh, things we got done this week uh, versus the template system um, Dulis OG 777 asks uh, F and F tonight oh god no um, yeah, this is just our first, if we can get the test running, um, or the servers running before uh, we leave tonight, this is still an alpha test. Uh, the, again, you, you know, I mean, you guys know the, the rhythm. We start with IT, we then go to alpha, or sometimes alpha and IT at the same time. Once it gets through that, then we go to beta. So since this will be the first time we're putting on uh, the abilities, activating the full ability system, full meaning what's in there currently uh, for alphas and IT. Uh, we can't uh, do an FNF uh, with our beta guys. Uh, Dulos OG asks, uh, do you have a cryptic movie quote for a hint at something unrevealed? Hmm, cryptic. I'll think, uh, I'll think about it. I think I said this last week, I didn't come up with one. I've got about seven minutes, so I'll see if I can come up with one uh, right. this week. Um, Piranha7 asks, after abilities are in good shape, what are the first animations that will be added? After all the abilities, I have no idea. Because uh, the ability system is going to require a lot of animations. A lot of work by Scott and Sandra. Uh, for the nine classes, and after that, I haven't even we haven't even discussed what's coming after that. Um, Adric Cortesia wants to know a little bit more about the portals. Do we need them for the released game and for the spirit classes? Oh, certainly. Um, that's the whole point. Uh, now, will they be portals there, or will they, they be a bridge? Will they be a spell? Right now, the portals are just a shape uh, that we've thrown on the ground. Uh, that's always going to be part. Uh, of the game one way or the other, even if you can walk between the islands or swim between the islands, now you just drown. But the ability to have uh, gates uh, for testing, yeah, we need to do that. We can't ask you guys or won't ask you guys at times, you know, to walk across, the <laughs> you know, these big islands to help test things out. So we'll, you know, use portals as uh, instant transit. Uh, for that, you know, for testing purposes. And then in the game, since we've been very clear uh, that instant transit uh, isn't going to be the, uh, something you're going to see, um, you know, they probably won't be used in a portal way, but more in uh, the, you don't know that the people on that other island or in that other tower or that other thing uh, are on another server, but they actually are. So. One way or the other, the tech is always going to be part of the game going forward. It has to be. Uh, Odelvik asks if, on behalf of us backers to wish Andrew and his bride good luck, would you sneak a duck onto the top table at the wedding? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, it's Ziz has a question, probably requires a longer answer, but how do you balance making a game you envision versus what crazy ideas rabid fans want? Well, I think, you know, uh, we've started with enough crazy ideas uh, that we're not actually looking for a lot of other ones. On the other hand, if people come up with a crazy idea that, think could, that I think and the team thinks could make it a better game, we'd consider it. Uh, the balance at the end of the day isn't about crazy ideas or good ideas or, you know, batshit crazy ideas. The balance is always to make a fun game uh, that, you know, today's players, meaning you folks, I don't mean, you know, the generation coming up now, but that you, you players 
find, or you backers, find this fun and enjoyable. Uh, we can't be making a game just for me, or just for Andrew, or just for anyone else. That's the balance. We've got to find a way, with any idea we have, of making sure that it's the game that the vast majority of our backers want. Um, you know, we know that no matter what we try, we won't get everybody. There's no way. Uh, there'll always be somebody or somebodies who will think that, you know, the game didn't fulfill their wants and needs. But that's the biggest thing we're going for. The vast majority of our backers to feel that the game we've made, regardless of how you'd like to um, uh, label the ideas, is still fun and something you want to stick with for a long time. Uh, Rahaldan asks, do first concepts or ideas of a guild or alliance system already exist? Oh, absolutely. More than that. Um, JB streamed uh, this week about some of the stuff we're doing. So yes, well along the way. Well. Uh, Beer Chug uh, asked to please pass on a congratulations to Andrew from all the backers on his wedding. Will uh, do. Uh, Zube asks, how do player made structures work with the cross server tech? You can see other players, can you see the structures as yep. well? It's going. To, the idea behind the tech again is that it's invisible, that you guys won't even know at times that what you're seeing is another server. Uh, Dion the Gray asks, uh, is the realization of the new skill component system making some initial class abilities too far fetched, or is it actually <laughs> opening up even more unique options? More unique options. Um, you know, and, and that's really one of the most important takeaways about the system. Uh, that we're designing is that it's something that is evolving over time and will evolve. We're not going with a obviously a canned ability system, duh, right? Uh, so as you know, Ben works on uh, the design and adds more components, or some other people come up with ideas. Because of the way the system is being crafted, it's easy to add more, right? If you just want to add some more components to the mix, more shapes, more reagents, whatever you know, we call them that's easy unlike an ability system where you've you know laid out 50 or so or 100 abilities and everything is well balanced or well, attempted to be well balanced uh, where adding things becomes much more difficult it's much easier you know for us to do that now the best part about it even if we're wrong because you always have to plan on being wrong if we're wrong and this system is too complicated for players well, it's really easy to then use the same building blocks we're using here to create abilities. So it's a win-win for you folks. If we're right that the ability crafting system works and is fun and is something that you guys like to play, fantastic. But if we're wrong, if you know you guys go, God, Mark, it's just too complicated, there are too many combinations, okay, fine. If the vast majority of backers tell us that no, it's not working, then we can easily segue to an ability system because we don't have to change anything other than create the abilities out of all the components that we already have. And that's easy. We've done that essentially already. So it's a huge win for you folks, no matter how we do it. If we had done the ability system first as full, fully crafted abilities, that would be more difficult. That'd be a real pain to then go backwards. Now, if we can have to go forwards and say, no, we're just going to go with an ability system and we're only going to give you some slight differentials uh, to play with, we've already got everything we need to make that happen. So, it's a good approach. I know, I know one way or the other it's going to work. Last one? Yeah, last one. Sorry. Uh, Mia Tallis asks, if I want to point potential backers to some information, are the BSC presentations still relevant and up to date with the latest design? Oh yeah, everyone. Otherwise we would take it down. Um, one of the things that I think has been a hallmark uh, of this campaign is that we've been very open, very honest with you folks. Uh, we haven't silently changed things, right? And not said anything. Ooh, this BSC stuff that you know we talked about, we're not going to do it. For better or worse, we've told you guys and gals when things have gone well, when things have not gone well. Uh, so as far as I know, and I think I'm pretty confident of that, um, everything we've said in the BSE is still true. 
And if it's not, then we would change it. We would take it out. But we would always tell you folks. Um, that's part of what makes us what we are. You know, it's part of what I hope makes you backers uh, even more confident uh, about our ability not only to deliver on the game, but to be the kind of studio you can support. You know, we're human, we make mistakes, you know, I apologize every time. But the difference is we don't hide stuff from you. You know, you know when people leave the studio, you know when people come to the studio, you know when people are sick. You guys have all the information. It's always out there. And we intend to keep it that way. So, yeah, point them to BSC, point them to anything you like. You know, as far as I know, everything on the website is still current. Good to go. Okay, so um, let me wrap up and say that first, uh, we are hoping to have a weekend alpha and IT test. Uh, we will. The goal is to have the ability system turned on, uh, to have classes turned on, so you folks can jump in and start to craft abilities in some of the classes. Details of what's working will be uh, put in the announcement, which will hopefully happen in the next uh, two hours. Uh, I'm out of here at 5.30, so it may not be for me. It will be from Tyler, uh, but we'll certainly let you know. Uh, if there is no test this weekend, or if it's not an ability test, we may have a portal test. Uh, we'll see where we're at. Uh, we've been making changes to the uh, various builds, hatchery and prep. So as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to check the current status. And before, before I leave at 5.30, we will, uh, I hope, have a much better idea of what kind of tests we'll have this weekend. If there isn't a test this weekend, we'll certainly have one early next week uh, because we are awfully close, and I mean like today or next couple days, uh, to having uh, you folks being able to uh, play around with more abilities than you've been able to play with since, uh, oh, I don't know, ever. So that's it on the test. As usual, thank you all. Uh, if it wasn't for you folks, we wouldn't be in the position we are today. We wouldn't be in the position of not only delivering uh, what is uh, already pretty cool tech, but starting to shape up uh, from our perspective to be pretty good game tech. Stuff that you will be able to use to create abilities, to port between islands and interact with people on other islands and other servers in the way you can. Um, Andrew's, you know, giant code dump uh, is also going to be very important, you know, over the next few weeks, even when he's on honeymoon. Um, and most importantly, if we can continue to get the kind of resumes we're getting uh, out in Seattle and hire the people I really hope uh, that we'll be making offers to in the next couple of weeks, the pace of this studio's uh, output will increase not only because we've added more programmers, and always remember that it takes time for programmers to ramp up, but more importantly because by then, as I call them, the musketeers, the programmers who are creating all the abilities uh, and the code, um, they're going to be able to start to turn their attention to other features. So if you want to look for hopeful signs, uh, look at it that way, that we've had some of our best people working on the ability system. And once they can come off that and turn to features, and we add a few more engineers, who are, you know, uh, working on features, how much more quickly uh, will things come out of the studio to get us into Beta 1 and beyond. So, again, just a great week. And with that, as always, thank you for your support, thank you for your patience, and I'll see some of you over the weekend, uh, if we have a test, and in the forums. Though, uh, actually booked all day tomorrow, as one can expect, as a groomsman with Andrew's wedding. But after that, hopefully on Sunday. So, folks, if I don't see you, have a great weekend. And if I do, uh, maybe you'll kill me with some abilities. We'll see. Have a good one.